Well, you know what? Sometimes fate works in funny ways. And recently, if you've been paying attention, we did a countdown of the top 10 trios in the Transformers universe, as voted on by you guys, the fans. Number 10, unfortunately, I did not have a plastic representation of to show off at the time of the recording. And number 10 was Rail Racer from Robots in Disguise 2001. And wouldn't you know it, as fate would have it, we actually get to do a full review of all three members and the combined mode in the latest Got Bot True review. One hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you are at it, that's right, baby, hit that notification bell because it helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man and the Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors NL, and the Autobot Family, and have a look for me everywhere across social media. All of those links, they are down in the description. And... If you've been paying attention, we recently did a countdown of the top 10 trios, as voted on by you guys. And by the way, if you haven't been checking out the top 10s, start, start checking them out. If you haven't been voting when I put up a question, start voting, man. It's your chance to have a say in how those things play out. All I do is count them up and present the results. And sometimes, I'm very surprised at what comes up. Case in point, number 10 on the trios list was Rail Racer, but at the time of recording, I did not have a representation to be able to uh, kind of showcase there when I was talking about him. Enter good friend of the channel, Maximal10, who is allowing me to take a look at his set for this trio and this combiner. So, today we're going to look at all three members individually, that being Rail Spike, Rapid Run, and Midnight Express, I think is the third lad's name. And of course we're going to look at the full combined mode and just how big it is, how hefty it is, how functional it is, and how stable it is. So, all three individuals first, and then the overall combined mode. Without any further ado, I think it's time for us to head over to the table and take a closer look at these guys. And yes indeed, here we have the entirety of Team Bullet Train. Of course, most people know this guy better by his combined mode name, that being Rail Racer from Robots in Disguise. And he is comprised of Rail Spike, Midnight Express and Rapid Run. In fact, I was so sad that I did not have these guys in hand when we did the most recent countdown of the top Transformers trios. This set, these guys, came in at number 10. Unfortunately, that was recorded before I was lucky enough to have Maximal 10 give me a loan of these guys to look at for you here on the channel. And it, it kind of seems only fitting. Since he was excluded from being shown in the countdown, the guy gets his own entire review. Seems only right to me. But we're going to look at each one of these characters individually. Then we're going to look at the final combined overall mode. And we might as well start at the top with the leader of the team first. And that would be this guy, and honestly, it's a pretty cool train. When Starscream wife saw him, she said, hey, that's a pretty neat train. He is based evidently on a 500 series Nozami bullet train. And he rolls pretty well, actually. Now, it's worth noting that this back here is his... I think they're called couplers. It's his hitch. And you can actually put all three members together. I should have shown that before I took the other two off screen. You know what? I'll show it now. Now, pardon me for not showing this earlier, but I'll get it out of the way now. They can all link up. All of them have a little, I guess, peg hole in the, the like nose of their engine that can go down over the little coupler. And guess what? Once they're all together, yes. They can all move as one train. I think that's really cool. Now getting down here a little more granular again. We're going to put this guy in his robot mode. And then we're going to kind of give him some quick grades before we go on and do the scores and whatnot for each of the other engines. We're going to begin by honestly coming down underneath here and picking that whole section off. That whole section is really his blaster. We'll see that a little bit later. But we're going to just lay that to the side for now. 
And that leaves us here with the main body of the main guy. And I hope I can remember how to do this. If I don't remember how to do this, hey, be easy on me, please. So we begin by, I don't think that this back section, by the way, was transformed correctly, but it's the way that, I, that it, it arrived here. So I put it back that way when I was kind of fiddling with this guy. I think that they're supposed to like actually fold down more, whatever. That's his toes right there. We can come to the back and pick this down and this down. And honestly, we could stand the guy up because that's really his feet done. Okay, so now he looks very tall, very thin. We come up here and we should be able to split the nose a little bit, but we also need to See if I can do this now. If I'm right, they should come out, and that should come out, and that should come out. That should come down, and that should come down. Okay, so what do I have done here? I lifted the two side panels off because that's gonna help us with his legs. And I split the nose and honestly, these hinges in here are very tight. You flip them down even all these years later. Some, what? I I'm gonna say better part of 20 years later because I think it was around 2000, 2001 that this guy would have come out. So some 20 years later, they're still super duper tight, which is great. We can turn these. We should be able to, yeah, extend the legs for now. If I'm not, yeah, yeah, I think that's what we're supposed to do for now. Uh, we should be able to even bring these down a little bit here on the side. We should be able to bring the arm down and turn it around so that we have the kind of entire white section on the outside. Same over here, arm down. Turn it around. This whole section comes down on the chest. The head comes up. We rotate the head around. We make sure that we have that tab together. We split the legs. This pelvis here does not like to really stay tabbed together all that well, even though it's supposed to stay tabbed together. We rotate the leg around, we rotate the leg around, and in essence I have a couple of things there I just need to sort of clean up slightly, but basically here we have the guy in his robot mode. And his blaster here is pretty straightforward. We bring it up, there's a button down here by the way, or sorry, up here for it to light up. I don't know if you can see that, but it does light up. That piece comes down, and then this little handle comes down here, and that is his blaster, which he can hold just fine like this. And honestly, this is pretty beautiful as far as I'm concerned. It's amazing that he becomes such a functional robot. The coloration, 10. Honestly, 10, I think it's pretty much perfect. One could argue there should be a touch more green, but I think it's pretty much perfect. There's no mistaking that this is rail spike. The transformation I think is brilliant for what it is. You extend the legs, the way the nose cone uh, opens up, even the way that the flaps kind of flip out on the side. They didn't need to do that, but they did, and I think that that's fantastic. He's a very functional robot, so in terms of transformation, honestly, I'm gonna say 10, I think it's great. What about the articulation? Remember, this was 2001. We were not yet up to Unicron Trilogy. We had just come off the heels of Beast Machines and Beast Wars, which had some awesome offerings. So how did this guy stack up? Well, we have a head that goes left and right, not really getting up and down. The shoulders could go all the way around. You would think that this would be a hindrance. It's not. All the way out to the side, we have super deep elbow. I'm, I'm for sure 90, maybe a bit more. Um, we have a swivel because of the ball joints. I don't think there's anything at the wrist, but small price to pay. The legs go all the way out to the sides. They go all the way forward. 
Not really back, which is a bit too bad, but uh, understandable. We have a knee. Now, it'd be nice if the knee was a bit deeper, but all things considered, at least there was a knee. There's this weird joint here, so you can, like, break, break his leg out to the side. That's a strange one, but it's there. We do have a swivel. We have, like, really heel and toe forward. No, uh, like, tilt, but he stands and he holds a pose tremendously tremendously well very functional for something that's 20 years old yes the knee could be a little bit deeper but i've seen things come out this year 2020 as of this recording that aren't as good as this i'm gonna say that a deeper knee would be nice i assume there's no waist no there's not but again let's remember that this guy's gonna have to combine later i'm gonna say honestly it's a solid nine this guy overall is a solid nine and a half onto the second engine now of this whole set, I have to admit that Midnight Express is probably the one that's a little worse for the wear. He has undergone some yellowing over the years, but you know what? He still functions great. He's still solid. We can come back here and pull that out. That's his blaster, basically. There's another part that goes with it, but we're going to lay that part aside for now. He still rolls tremendously well. He is apparently an E4 Series Max bullet train. And his conversion, again, it's a, like, I guess it's a little weird. We lift this section up and we pull this piece out. This piece goes connected to this piece, which I will do right now. Um, maybe it's this way it's supposed to go. Yeah, it's this way it's supposed to go connected. There, like that, we get a, a blaster form when they go together. This fires as well if you press the little button down here but i don't want to do that i'm just going to lay that aside then we come to the front here and we do the same thing really if we can get it there so we pick both of those sections up Whew. okay then we should be able to no stay up then we should be able to begin to extend the leg and extend the leg and really, oh, and I just popped that off the ball joint. That happens with this one, I find. I'll put that on after because I actually want to show this. You have to take the kind of thigh, hip section, I guess, and rotate it around and then angle it down. Same over here, rotate it around and then you should be able to angle them down. I'm gonna get that other arm on and I'm gonna readjust things so that we can actually kind of continue on from here. Okay, so we're gonna deal with the kind of like feet and lower legs here first. So we bring that down and that should be able to come down. Oop. Turn around and then bring this out and that'll turn this way. And then over on this side, we should be able to turn this around, extend this back, and then this section as well should be able to fold up to become the other foot. It's kind of tight here. I'm gonna get that done and turn in the right orientation so that you don't have to watch me fiddling with it because it is a bit tight, and then we'll continue. My apologies for the couple of cuts there, but extending the feet hinges, uh, the sliders are really, really tight. So I'm trying to be delicate with it because again, this isn't mine. As I stated before, this is on loan to me by a good friend of the channel, Maximal 10. So I wanna be delicate with it. Once we have the legs down, we can take the guy and turn him around and then extend the hips down the rest of the way. We can take this main section here and bring it down. That's how I know this is the front because this section does not fold down on the back. We can extend this arm down and we can extend this arm also down and then we can kind of come up here and bring the head back and then angle it forward and in the end, boom, here we have Mr. Midnight Express. Okay, let's get into his scores. By the way, can he hold his blaster? Yeah, of course he can hold his blaster. No problem, man. Just like that.
Okay, so as I was saying, about those scores, honestly, again, I look at this, and I suppose if you wanted to be more like the animation, you could bring those down on his shoulders, because he kind of had them more down on his shoulders sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes in the animation he had them down a little more on his shoulders. When I look at the animation, if I'm not mistaken, this is actually pretty darn close for the most part. Maybe a few extra yellow details, like down here in the windows, possibly. But besides that, I think it's pretty accurate. I love the head sculpt on the guy. As weird as the body proportions and whatnot are here, and trust me, they're pretty weird. I'm gonna say, honestly, it's a solid nine and a half. It really is. In terms of the transformation, everything, even now, 20 years later, still feels tight, some of it a little too tight. You might say, hey, there's a lot of like translucent plastic used, but you know what? It all feels robust and thick. I don't feel like I'm gonna actually break anything. I wanna say that the transformation, again, for like a thin elongated train turning into a robot, as weird as the body proportions might be, I think it's kind of ingenious. I'm gonna say again, a solid nine and a half. The guy is scoring really well. What about the articulation? Well, again, these things can go up and down. The head goes left and right and up and down. The arms can go all the way out to the side. We have a, do we have a bicep swivel? We don't have a bicep swivel from what I can see. We do have a double hinged elbow though. Nothing at the wrist. We do not have a waist. The legs can go all the way out to the side on ratchets no less, all the way, all the way forward, all the way back, I mean, the guy's all leg. We have a thigh swivel, we have uh, a, a solid 90 degrees for sure there. We have kind of toe tilt forward, we have heel, same here. No real, like, tilt left and right, but he holds, uh, like, he's able to stand and hold a pose, no problem. I'm gonna say uh, the proportions are weird though. No bicep swivel is a little disappointing, but still for the time it's really good. I'm gonna say it's solid nine. Overall, the guy's a 9.25. So we have a nine and a half, we have a 9.25, on to the last one. Oops, wait, 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 wait. Just hold on one moment. I forgot to include one of the pieces of articulation here. The shoulder, if I can hold on to the guy. The shoulder here can actually also go all the way around very easily. You'd think that would get in the way, but it doesn't. Okay, okay. Now on to the third and final member of the team. And yes sir, yes sir, the last one we have is Rapid Run. We're gonna come down here and pop that piece out. We're going to come to the side here, I think it is. Where exactly is it? Maybe it's... Hmm. I need to find, ah, there. We use, we put our finger in right there. There's actually a little like edge there for it. And we put that in there. And we pick that whole section up. There's a little blaster handle down there. We can also take these little black pieces right here and fold them out. And then there's a little kind of peg hole um, right there and we take this piece and it should be able to slot in there and really this is the blaster shield thing for rapid run taking that out of it now we can get into rapid run himself the feet here begin to come down and fold up we extend those out and bring these up the rest of the way we bring the heels down and we should be able to extend the legs. I'm gonna extend the legs, get the guy stood up, and then we'll do the upper body. And as you have probably come to expect by now, with the lower body done, we can focus on the tube that is the upper body. And that will cause us to bring out those two sections. We're gonna rotate the waist around. We're going to fold, if we can. I might have to actually kind of get the arms here out of the way. There we go. We're gonna fold that section all the way down, and then we fold the nose cone down, 
that allows us to flip out the face, bring the nose cone back up and peg it in, bring these sections forward. That arm does like to pop off, but we're going to pop it back on. There. I do have this arm extended. If we come over here, you can see how this is supposed to work, where you extend the arm and then you extend the hand and you bring the arm all the way down and in the end here we have Rapid Run in all of his glory and we can even put this in this is a tight fit there in Rapid Run's hand thusly I guess the transformation for Rapid Run, pretty great. Pretty great as it has been for all of these guys. I'm going to say, again, it's a solid 9. It's very interesting, although this guy does have a little bit of parts forming, but at least you have a reason to use it. Then we get to the coloration, and this doesn't seem quite right to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like the black should be a little more blue, and I feel like the gray should be a little more off-white so I'm gonna say that it's more like I don't know like the head is correct I'm gonna say it's more like a, a seven maybe a seven and a half I don't think it's the best one of the three and then we get to the articulation so so far we have you know, like a solid uh, nine for the transformation we'll say we have a seven and a half I don't know the guy let's say right now is getting about an eight the articulation we have a head that can't really do anything. Disappointing. Uh, the shoulders can go all the way around and go out to the side. We have at least 90 degrees at the elbow, though the elbow also can go back if you want to do that for whatever weird reason. No bicep swivel. The wrist can go forward and back as well. No, or sorry, this guy does have a waist. All the way out to the side. No thigh swivel. Bit disappointing. We do get a fairly deep knee though. And again, the heel and the toe, but they can't go to the side. Um, I don't know, I wish there was a thigh. And I wish the head could do something more. Am I sure about that with the head? I, I wanna make sure. Yeah, I don't, no, I'm, 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 no, the head can move. I'm sorry, the head can move. So, thigh swivel, I suppose. Maybe a bicep swivel. Overall, it's pretty good. I'm going to say it's a solid 9 because what's there actually moves very free and you might not think that's always the case, especially with the legs um, and like the hips. Like you wouldn't think it because they're kind of close together, but like, you know, pretty well forward. Can they go back? Yeah, I mean, like they can go all the way back, like, you know, all the way up to the side. Like they're very, very functional, actually. So what about all three just as a team? They were, they are a fantastic group and... There's not much here to dislike, even now in the modern age. I would say that this is still a solid nine. They're fantastic. Could they use an update? Maybe, but in all honesty, it'd be kind of hard to improve too much on this. I mean, uh, you know, a, a thigh swivel here, a bicep swivel there, maybe a wrist rotation at some point and an ankle tilt, but nothing major. Here they are uh, in comparison to uh, let me kind of adjust this accordingly. But like, here they are in comparison to a modern day Voyager, that being of course Grapple from the Earthrise line. And I would say it's pretty safe to say that these guys are in essence Voyagers. Now, we do have the combined mode to go and we're going to take everybody off except for the lower legs first. Okay, so we're beginning here, and it's pretty simple actually. We're going to fold up the, if I can do it, we're gonna fold up the arms. If I can do it, there and there, and bring that down over. We're gonna do the same over here, which is fold up, fold up, and bring that down over. We're going to flip this piece up in the center, and then the head is actually going to 
go straighten up and back down in here and bring that down and we're going to turn that around the way that this will attach we'll use these two sections up right there but in essence that's the lower body done in terms of his blaster well we'll worry about that a little bit later but this is the lower part done from the waist down. and so that brings us to this weird lad who is Burn on easily the most complicated of the three members and also the one that I is the least intuitive. I don't enjoy trying to figure this guy out. I'm going to do the best I can for you, but I inevitably, invariably end up forgetting steps here and there with this guy. So I apologize if that happens. So I guess we're just going to open that up for now. We're going to bring down the nose, we're going to flip this in, we're going to leave the nose out, and then we flip up the whole thing, and then there's a slider inside that all of this needs to come forward thusly, and then it all rotates around. Whew. The connection points really are up right there and there's a, a rounded section right here. Two rectangular pieces on the translucent and then a rounded section. I, I'm going to show what that connects into in a few moments, but actually this will go flipped and turned kind of upside down this way because this is actually the tummy and I guess technically his butt <laughs> for lack of a better term. We take the legs and they will come down like that. Uh, I guess we can sort of bring the arms back here out of the way, kind of for now. Then these should be able to come like this. We'll bring this one up, down, and we will rotate it like this. Now, sometimes when you see it, these legs are face down. Sometimes when you see it, these legs are faced up. I'm going to bring that, I'm going to bring the entire toe section down, I think. Push that in, push that up, and I'm going to push it in like that. There's other ways to be able to do it. I'm going to take that down, I'm going to push this in, in, and down, and then this folds down, and this folds down and everything sort of connects here and down bottom see if i can see if i can explain this so we have a couple of translucent pieces down here and a circular tab in here then a section will kind of go over this rail and into two slots up here for the upper body in terms of these arms back here honestly you're supposed to bring the uh, hands down, I tend to just bring them up on the side like that. It's not correct, but it gets them out of the way. Okay, so to attach the tummy to the hips and the rest of the lower body, we have that round peg that will go into this screw hole here, and then the two translucent uh, tabs will go in between these yellow pieces up here, so that it looks like this in the end. Whew, yeah, that's how we do it. Now, it's a bit of a beer to tab everything in. Plus, you're dealing with translucent plastic, so you want to be somewhat delicate. That said, I don't feel like this is bad translucent plastic. I don't feel like anything's going to break or crack. Everything seems good. All we have to do now is the chest, the arms, and the head, and that brings us to this guy and his lovely upper body. So, we're going to kind of begin by... Rotating these arms, bring them back up, rotate and bring it back up. We're going to, I guess, flip up these sections and these and we fold down and fold down. Then we should be able to split all of this here at the hips and center. I just pulled the leg off, but that's not a big deal. Bring it out to the side. And bring it all the way out to the side. So far, so good. Then we should be able to 
turn this head around and push it down and bring this head up over. This of course being the combined mode head. We're going to make sure that's out of the way. We should be able to turn these, bring that head all the way back, bring this up like this and close that around the front and bring the head out thusly. Make sure these are now all the way out to the side. Some people like to bring these well forward like this. They're not supposed to be, but I guess you can. We bring these arms down, open those like that. Once we have those arms down, then we should be able to, I think it's turned this way, I believe. I believe it's turned that way, if I'm not mistaken. Then we should be able to, there's a way to, there you go, extend that hand and extend that hand and then using these hinges here you should be able to take the whole thing and hinge it forward like that so you can see the difference here now of where that shoulder is and back where this one is you take this one and you do the same thing you bring it all the way forward and hinge it in and this is kind of the like most of the upper body done this rail system right here will go on over that piece that pushed out and then if we come down underneath here I'm not exactly sure where they are now but just slide that rail piece in and then these pieces here should be able to slide down oh right here right here on the blue there's a little tab there and a little tab right there on the blue those tabs go into slots on the upper part of the torso and once you slide everything in and tab everything in, boom, here you finally have Rail Racer in all of his combined mode glory. Now for the record, you take these two blasters and put them together and they become one singular blaster that does fit in his hand. It's a little bit of a beer to get it in there. And then this whole thing stays exactly as it was. It serves as a shield in the other hand. Again, the hand holds it. Fine, I guess. It's not super secure, but it's all right. Let's get into grades for this guy. What about the, I guess, the look and the paint apps and whatnot? I'm going to say, honestly, it's not bad. Like, it's pretty accurate. I'm going to say it's a solid nine for sure. Again, a couple of areas might have benefited from a little bit of extra green, but that's about it. That's a pretty minor complaint overall. The transformation to get here, and I suppose if you really want it to look animation accurate, these should really be kind of by rights closed out like that. Um, so a nine is a good start. In terms of the transformation to get here, it's all right for the most part. The difficulty is with the like tummy and the back. That's definitely the hardest part. Having everything together can be a little bit of a bear, but once you do it, like. He's solid, like, it's a great connection method. So I'm gonna say it's about an eight. Then we get to the articulation. The head can go left and right and kind of up and down. The arms can go out to the side. I guess if we open this, they can really kind of come forward. Not really much in the way of back. We do have, it's so weird, we have, so many weird, like that's a knee, but it kind of gives you, a, you know, the chance here to have a, like a bicep swivel. And then we have like, I guess an elbow to 90 degrees. We don't have a wrist swivel, but we do have articulated thumb and fingers. If you really wanted these sections here on the back can be angled up as kind of like flared wings, I suppose. Uh, I don't think there's a waist, or if there is, it's hard to access. And then the lower legs can still go all the way out to the side. They can still go forward, knee, uh, swivel, everything that we had like individually, but it's all now supporting the combiner. So with the age that this guy is, some of the joints like to um, move up in his body, like they don't lock in per se, though they should have had a locking point. So they do tend to sometimes kind of go uh, slid up into his body and make him stand a little, a little bit crooked. Same with the ankles.
couple of... It's good, but like... Boy, oh boy, sometimes. And it's only because of the age. It's not the build or anything like that. It's just where the guy is older now, right? Where the guy's older. Sometimes getting them situated is a little harder than you might like, but he's solid. He's hefty if you have a good copy. Honestly, the articulation is all right for what it is for the time that it came out. As a matter of fact, I would say that the articulation for him is probably a solid, considering the time, it's probably a solid eight. Here he is, size-wise, next to a traditional leader class offering, this being Star Convoy. So final analysis of the uh, bullet train team of Rail Racer. Honestly, the individual bots still stand overall as like nines, nines and a halves. They're fantastic. The overall combiner, still very good, probably more like an eight, eight and a half. Overall, as a set, I would say that this still stands as an excellent representation of the character slash characters it's intended to be. Overall, I'd say it's still about a solid 8.75 or a nine. All these years later, another example of something that was thought up and executed and designed absolutely efficiently from day one. And here we are once again. And anybody who tells me that new is always better, anybody who tells me that there's all kinds of new technologies we've never seen, bull. That's nonsense. This is 20, some, some 20 years old now. And honestly, if we look back at something like uh, Beast Wars and Beast Machines, they had great offerings there. The introduction of ball joints was a big factor for the increase in posability and uh, articulation and display options. And then when we went back to vehicles with robots in disguise, while granted not everything was perfect, man, man, some things were done so well. This guy here, case in point, is he perfect? No. A bicep swivel here and there would be nice. Uh, a thigh swivel here and there might be nice. But honestly, these stand up, even by today's standards, as pretty darn good. Would it be nice to see a couple of more locking points, perhaps? Maybe, but there's nothing wrong with this other than a little bit of discoloration on one of these guys. Individually, yeah, the proportions are weird, but they all function great, and you would think that they would be very hindered by all of their kibble and nonsense that's on them, but they're really, really not. They actually function really well and stand really well. Combined? Granted, there's, I wish there was a little more range of motion, perhaps, in the arm, but that's a really small thing. You can actually get a, a fair amount of dynamic poses, and it has a pretty wide range of articulation. A bit smaller than modern-day combiners, if you compare them to uh, even Combiner Wars, or something like the Selects Piranacon. It, you know, it's about a leader, traditional leader size, not the not the baby leaders that we get nowadays, but it's solid. Like, I can hold this, holding it down there, but like, I can hold it, for example, and the blaster came out of his hand, but like, I can hold my shoulder and shake it and nothing. It is solid. I don't feel like anything's going to break, even with the use of translucent plastics in certain places. I don't think anything's going to break. I don't feel like anything is uh, stressed. He was, is, and probably always will be fantastic. Would it be nice to get an update or an, some sort of an upgrade for this guy? Yeah, probably. But this guy, much like I've said before about uh, Vector Prime, Voyager Vector Prime, it's hard to improve on it because the original was already pretty fantastic. Anyway, let me know what you think about each of these guys and the combined mode. If you didn't already, let me know what you think about them in the list video. Let me know what you think about this guy. Let me know what you think about each of the lads that comprise him. I love it when you guys come by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. It is so very, very much appreciated. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, there's a donate link down in the description. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Stick around and have some fun with us. I hope you are being safe and making smart choices now for you and for your family. Don't forget somehow, some way, each and every single day, man, you do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights around 6 Eastern at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way right here inside the videos.